Hello, Dr. Milena. Thank you so much for joining today. Thank you so much, Jane, for your kind invitation. It's a great, great pleasure to be here today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. So before we start, I wanted to briefly introduce about you. Um, so you worked in the neuroscience field for functional language mapping, specifically for epilepsy surgeries to avoid post-surgical language deficits, which sounds very, very interesting and also important. Um, and you also published a study on improving the functional language methodology by using machine learning. So I really wanted to go deeper about these topics. It's just that due to my limited knowledge, I couldn't. <laughs> so I asked you um, and uh, we discussed that we probably could um, focus on more about our daily life, how we can train our brains and to reduce our stress specifically. So um, you do have this awesome podcast channel. The podcast is called Doing the Impossible, which covers all different fields, including neurolinguistics, neuroeducation, neuromeditation, cognitive science, neurotechnology, neurobiology, all of these interesting stuff. So if you are, um, any of you are interested in, you know, um, listening to the episodes, you can always join to Dr. Milena's podcast channel. Um, there are some other very interesting topics, including the mind of a bee, and also, you know, helping the brain to self-regulate, which kind of is relevant to the topic we'll be discussing later on. And also, you know, the science of magic, all this good stuff, which you never really get to hear anywhere else. So as a brain coach, can you kindly introduce yourself a little, Dr. Milena? Of course, of course. Thank you very much, Jane, for your wonderful introduction. Uh, I am a neuroscientist, as you already said. I work with the human brain. I'm a specialist in brain imaging methodologies. It means that I use various techniques, different approaches to study human brain and learn everything about the brain. And uh, I start with non-invasive techniques, which something that we start uh, from adding sensors on the surface of our head, for example, like uh, yes, with the I caps saw the like this. It looks very interesting. Uh, yes, How and here. Yeah, those sensors that are actually touching our head. This already very new um, uh, approaches, new sensors. And uh, they even don't need any gels that you would be injecting because before, you know, people we would need to put some gel into the electrodes and all hair would get messy. So now we don't need to do this. Oh, wow. Just a simple cap. And... Um, it sends all the information uh, from our brain to the computer, which we can uh, analyze in real time. And uh, this is uh, why I got so interested in brain-computer interfacing, uh, this real-time analysis of the data and transferring it into possible commands directly from our brain to various devices. So we can communicate with external devices. We can type uh, uh, in our computers by just thinking. Uh, and uh, these methodologies are extremely helpful and for patients with various disorders. Right now I'm working with patients uh, post-stroke uh, who have uh, motor deficits and <clears throat> we're using brain-computer interface methodology to help them restore uh, their function. And also we can go very invasively. So uh, not only we can uh, look uh, from the surface of the head, but from the actual sur surface of the brain. And uh, we can uh, put electrodes directly on the brain. Uh, we would need to do a surgery for that. And this is uh, the real uh, electrodes that are being put. Um, wow. And yes, and we can record all this information. And also we can do it in real time and provide uh, all the information and feedback in real time and help uh, many, many people. So this is uh, what I've been doing. And I published a lot, over 50 publications I have and book chapters wow. altogether. Uh, and uh, I always uh, was interested in real 
practical application of neuroscience. That's why I'm trying to work with patients always. Uh, what can we learn from neuroscience to help? Yes, to help people, to help patients. And uh, I always was looking for what else is possible, how else we can apply neuroscience knowledge, the knowledge about our mind, about our brain to help people. And I've learned about um, first steps of using neuroscience to help people achieve their goals, to be successful, to build successful careers, to alleviate stress. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and that was the concept of neuro coaching. So coaching based on evidence, um, based principles that we can use to help people um, succeed and build their careers. So I uh, got trained as a uh, uh, coach brain-based coach and then life coach so i went through several um, certifications and i started helping people uh, to do well in their lives especially in their jobs their careers manage their time relieve stress and find that um, a life work balance because many people have burnouts especially as, as as we get older and we allocate just all our energy only to work uh, and uh, I started helping people with that. So uh, this is where I am. And I started my podcast. Thank you for mentioning it. To inspire people to choose different fields in uh, neuroscience and neuroscience related uh, professions. And that's why we have a wide range of everything. Mm -hmm. That's my main goal to show, look, how, what uh, is the abundance of everything that is possible and you can find yourself in neuroscience coming from virtually any professions uh, if you are a coach learn neuroscience and you will apply neuroscience principles it will be neuro coaching uh, if you are coming from the field of ai's yes learn about the brain and apply this as well uh, if you are coming uh, from uh, the field of magic, magic performance, yes, you still can do it. Actually, Dr. Barnhart, uh, he is already the chair of the psychology department, and he came from being a magic performer. And now he is using all these approaches, techniques to teach his students, make uh, his lectures interesting, engaging, and showcase all the uh, cognitive psychology and neuroscience principles through that amazing lens. So that's why I'm inviting everybody really to take a moment and think what's possible in this world for me based on what I know, what I learn, and I would like to do in relation to uh, the science of our brain. And there are so many opportunities and it's the field is just expanding so it's so almost it. tempting it's almost <laughs> tempting to myself too because you know <laughs> yes because because i uh, listened to this episode of your podcast you interviewed um this fascinating linguist marco hey, who was talking Mark, about a very interesting topic of you know alien language you know the possibility of alien languages and whatnot but yes. it also you know can be connected to the topic of neurolinguistics which was not on my question list but can you probably share a little bit about how it works yours new linguistics work and what is discussed and what is researched these days what are the you know trending topics these days um mm -hmm. some of those brief ideas is is it okay if, uh, of can you course of course share? Uh, Thank yes, you. Uh, uh, yes, I, I think probably you, you would need to bring a neurolinguist, yes, to have more <laughs> explanation on that. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome everybody to the second part of this podcast with Marco Mazzanti, which uh, uh, aired just yesterday. So oh, okay, I didn't get a chance. I only listened yeah. to episode one, but I'll make sure to visit it. Yes, yes, but so thank you so much for uh, mentioning it. And uh, in neurolinguistics, we are looking at the connection between the neural substrates of language and language itself. We're looking at uh, uh, various uh, 
cognitive processes uh, that are associated with us using language. So everything about our mind and language, our brain and language, all possible connections, how one is supporting uh, another, how what development of one, let's say, of the brain uh, affects the development of language. So it's all those developmental trajectories, what is happening, uh, we we are investigating. Then uh, what is also very important, this field contributes to our knowledge of how to learn language. What are the best mm -hmm. practices of learning language? Um, because it's all about how we add information to our brain, how we process that information, yes, uh, how we uh, retrieve the information that we stored from the brain. And that's why we would talk about attention, uh, how, what, what are the best ways for us to really focus, pay attention uh, when we are learning a language. Um, then what uh, the best practices to maintain and store that information in our memory and then retrieve, for example, retrieval practices. So it's that more cognitive, I would say, neuroscience, cognitive science and language, uh, when to start studying language, um, how we can do, um, and uh, actually all of this will be in uh, the second part of the podcast. Exactly, so I, will, yes. I will not be spoiling yes, this <laughs> for you because I really would like you to listen and then sure. to learn more from, from Marco. Yes, that's that. I would love to listen to it. So I believe it's about the best strategies for language learning, which is really strongly relevant to us, translators, linguists, and everybody else. We are always eager, eager to learn more languages all the time and yeah. i thought it, this episode will be really really super interesting so thank you so much for sharing again um so moving back to my initial question of stress reduction i really wanted to know more about because i visited your youtube channel you were sharing many interesting videos about how you can really use your um you, you know brain management skills to manage or maintain your mental hygiene as you put it and can you probably introduce us to you know how important it is to have control of what is inside of us uh, which causes oftentimes the stress yes absolutely i'm happy to share this is one of my favorite topics when i start working with people and in general one of the first i i would like to mention this is the topic of mental hygiene. Uh, we all know about uh, our physical hygiene. Yes, we wash hands, especially now after the pandemics and everything. We are very cautious. Uh, we uh, uh, take a shower in the morning. And so that uh, is a no-brainer. We, we just do it. Um, and uh, one of the reasons for that, because definitely there can be some microorganisms that we want to get rid of off uh, they can be harmful some of them actually are very helpful they protect our skin uh, and some of them can be harmful so we want to get rid of them and uh, there are thousands of different types so we even don't know but <laughs> we have colonies <laughs> um, in general we can look at, at the human body as the collection of different colonies of, of mm -hmm. cells yes and uh, whatnot uh, but we never think about ourselves and our thoughts in that way. And uh, if we really start paying close attention to what's going on in our mind, uh, we have like hundreds and hundreds of different thoughts throughout the day. And uh, some of those thoughts can be very supportive of us. Yes, uh, I, I did it really well today. Uh, this, this is something I learned, something new that will help me in the future and I know how and so on and so forth. Um, however, sometimes we can have some thoughts and that uh, we even didn't notice, but uh, thoughts like this, um, I don't know how to do it. I will never be able to accomplish anything like this. Yes. And we don't notice, but those thoughts are actually creating consequences for us. They affect our mood. Yes. They're connected to our mood, to our feelings, our emotions. 
and uh, uh, this uh, like um, un unseen, uh, um, not not microorganism, something that is actually hampering our possibility to achieve our goals. We are even not aware of that, but it's happening without us even noticing. So uh, what I am suggesting to have the same hygiene as we have for our body, but just for our mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a very simple procedure. It doesn't uh, require much time. I uh, have the analogy for this as looking at what's in your purse or what's in your backpack. Yes. Yeah? So what are all those thoughts that we're accumulating throughout the day? And uh, I have here like little purse. I didn't take a backpack. I thought it would be too much. But basically we start looking, okay, what, what is this? First of all, we just take everything out because there can be many different things. You see, I have an electrode here. I, I'm not sure if I need it really, yes? So, and um, I have some post-its and, and so on and so forth. So I start taking all those things out and I'm looking at them. So how can we do it practically? Just a simple notebook. I have it with me all the time. And especially when we start feeling anxious or stressed, that's the best time to do it. I start writing my thoughts down. For example, there is a situation, upcoming interview. Yes, Jane, you are going to a, a podcast. You were invited and you feel anxiety, something, mm -hmm. yes especially before and yours can start writing what 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 is the situation about yes you are going to present um, publicly at uh, in front of big audience and what uh, what do you think about it what are your thoughts maybe there will be uh, i might fail people may not like what i say uh, yes something like this uh, you put it uh, everything down uh what do you think about yourself in this situation and some people might say you know i i'm not good at that yes you can find this type of thoughts uh, what can you think about others in this situation others will not enjoy what i say they might not need what i say they will not understand and you put all this down and then that's part number one as soon as you just put all those thoughts on your paper, you will have a sense of relief immediately. Because all that information that was bothering, that was going on in your head, now it's out of you. Yes, it got out of you. So that's part number one. And then part number two, you can start questioning, is this a fact? Or is this just a thought? Okay. And from everything I said, the fact was that you are just going to the interview. That's all. Anything else, if you think they will not like me, I'm not good, and so on and so forth. If you think about this, these are not facts at all. These are just your opinions, your thoughts. If you think about many other people around, will they all agree on what you said? Probably not. Somebody will say, Jane is amazing. I love listening to her. And then if you start thinking, oh, you know, I've done already quite a few of those interviews and I did quite well. So I think I'm quite good at that. Yes. So immediately your brain will start generating new thoughts, new ideas that are supportive of what you are going to do. And you will come to your interview in completely different mindset and you will have completely different results. So that's the very simple procedure that you can do every day to empty your brain, to evaluate your thoughts and choose the thoughts that will support you. Yes, just have that focus on those particular thoughts. So this is my um, suggestion. 
that you can follow and uh, you will be clean and ready to do amazing things in this world and physically and mentally the most important with both physical and mental hygiene it's very interesting and I, I love the I actually love the analogy of you know organizing your own bag and or backpack or whichever you're using um, to coach your own brain and this concept was fairly new to me too um, in terms that I didn't imagine taking out thoughts is actually you know taking them out of your yourself I didn't get the connection like that before I guess like mm -hmm. I could write that write write down on thoughts, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I was organizing them. Mm -hmm. Now I'm, you know, discovering better on how I can do it. Um, especially for the part of choosing only the ones that help among all the other thoughts. I think yeah. it's a, it's a really important aspect to Absolutely. remember mm. yes very yes. very interesting mm. yeah choosing on purpose so in coaching we're calling it choosing on purpose purposely choosing what you want to think because very often we don't think we actually have uh, any control over our thoughts but we are the ones that are generating them correct so mm. it's in our power and our control choose what we want to think uh the problem is just we just never even think about this yes exactly. we just let, yes, yes. let yeah. it happen you don't have time for self-reflection mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. so so would you have any recommendations on it just occurred to me um how regularly should we do it like, do you do it every single, you said every day, but do you do it every single morning or do you have to, you know, set times, how many, you know, times a day or how much time for each portion of the, you know, should, should I say um, the calm moment? It, it's, it's something different than meditation, isn't it? It's not a it, meditation. It, it is. You know, there are different types of meditation. So here, mm -hmm. uh, I, I wouldn't say it's a meditation, uh, probably more reflection on, on what you are doing, but med there are types of meditation which are reflections, yes? And this is what uh, we are talking about in one of the podcasts on neuro meditation. Mm -hmm. that there are so oh. many different types, yes, that right, we can right, right. Uh, mm -hmm. actually. Um, yes, so uh, how I usually approach um, this topic uh, and in general work uh, with people I think that everybody has their own uniqueness and unique needs I cannot say you should do it just one way or another way mm -hmm. uh, I recommend everybody fi to find their own way but for starters just to start doing something I can share my experience, how I do it. I like personally do it early in the morning because we tend to get busy throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So the most important part, yes, like this, uh, my favorite book, it did that frog. Yes, the most mm -hmm. important and maybe difficult part you do difficult. first thing in the morning. Yes, and yes. then you don't mm -hmm. need to worry about this anymore. Mm -hmm. So I get up fairly early and I have uh, time for my mind, for my brain. And uh, during this time, I do this type of work. So as uh, any hygiene, I recommend doing it every day, every day. And then uh, it's uh, really organizing your mind. Uh, if you imagine if you had a storage that you never came to and it was populated you know, with all <laughs> kinds of stuff through uh, years, years of, of your work. Uh, uh, yes, and, and life, of course, you will have a lot of things there, and you even don't know what it is. So first of all, you just need to switch the light on and start looking, mm -hmm. and you see this uh, huge place with you don't know what. So you need to start looking at this, and if you start doing it every day, uh, it, it gives best result. And uh, yes, uh, and then... Also, uh, very important moments when you feel stressed, when you feel anxious, when something is bothering you, just 
sit down and do it immediately. It alleviates the anxiety and stress tremendously. Just this one piece of work with yourself. And you don't need anybody else to help you with that. Exactly. You are self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. You can do it at any time. Yeah. So that, that would be my recommendation. And then just follow your intuition uh, and see where, where it will bring you. Trust yourself. Thank you, Thank you so much. It it is so helpful so much already thank you so much amazing tips um so where should we find you further um before we go would you have any other you know remaining top habits to to properly train or um coach our brain or any other sources of your own channel we can visit later on so that we can learn more about these topics Yes, of course, there are many, many different topics and uh, I, I coach on all of them and uh, I, I don't want to over um, crowd right now uh, the, the viewers with too much information. I think mental hygiene, I would recommend the, the first thing to start with. And uh, after that, and time management and setting priorities, goal setting and uh, working with so-called procrastination. And, and there are many things that can be done. Uh, I would refer everybody to my uh, web website, uh, which is neuroapproaches.org, and uh, um, everybody can actually reach me, and uh, I provide free consultation. Uh, if you have any questions, if you don't know how to uh, improve your um, time management habits, uh, if you are struggling to um, achieve your goals, uh, even doing your thesis, PhD, uh, or new project that you, uh, you are trying to do, if you have that increased stress, anxiety um, that is coming uh, for you when, when you are studying, when you are uh, doing your work, yeah. um, always um, I provide uh, one free session and I encourage people to uh, do this session with me because uh, it, it is very very helpful just one session like this can uh, help you tremendously so i welcome everybody i love working with people and uh, looking forward to it thank you dr milena i really love your website by the way it fully covers all the topics and services you provide for all the people in the world um, and as translators, we get to go through all the demanding times, you know, with all different projects and all. Um, so it might be something that are relevant to, to us too. So I, I am very thankful for you to, you know, um, providing all these tips with all of us out here. <laughs> so thank you again so much for your time. And I really look forward to seeing more of you on LinkedIn. We are already seeing each other oftentimes, but I really appreciate your, you know, liking my posts and, and I really do enjoy all of your posts. It, it is really cover, covering all these different topics on, you know, neuroscience, which is very knowledgeable and in depth. So I might um, figure everybody else would appreciate all your work too. So thank you so much again, Milena. Mm -hmm. I, I hope to see you again. Thank very you very fair. much, Jean. And I also want to say that you are such an inspiration for me. Every uh, post that you post on, on LinkedIn, I, I feel the warmth that is coming. Oh, from thank me. you. <laughs> yes, uh, it is beautiful. And that's why I, I react to them. And of course, uh, um, that's something that I always look forward to. And oh. I admire uh, also your willingness to expand yourself now. Now you are uh, working uh, <clears throat> in the field uh, of uh, uh, translation, but you are uh, expanding yourself to learning about AIs, uh, and that's uh, an amazing. I'm so crazy story. about AI. <laughs> yes, yes, and I see how how passionate you are about that. So you are a great inspiration, and thank you very much. And please continue with your amazing, amazing work. Um, oh. so Thank you very much. Thank you. That's that's that means a lot to me. Thank you again, Dr. Milena. I wish you all the best and I'll see you again. Thank you. My, my pleasure. Thank you. Bye bye.